There have been racing at Doncaster since Elizabethan times, so there had been a racing tradition, but it was not the most important course in Yorkshire. That was the Navesmire at York. In 1760s, they introduced what is the Gold Cup. Then, the St. Ledger was introduced. After 20, 30 years, it kind of reached the beginning of a golden age. And from that point, Doncaster superseded York and became the most important racing venue in the North. Many people say, in the country. In our collection at Doncaster, we have around 200 paintings related to horses and also to the St. Ledger in particular. And it really reflects the importance that the St. Ledger as a race has had to the history of the town. The exhibition is called A Day at the Races and annually we're now doing a, an exhibition relating to the St. Ledger because the St. Ledger has become a big festival in Doncaster which takes place every year. So each year we look at different facets in our collection related to racing imagery. The St. Ledger Stakes is a race which began in the 1770s and it was unique. Beforehand, racing had been dominated by heats of four miles, run four times, so a horse runs 60 miles in a day. And the St. Ledger was a new kind of race. It was called a dash of two miles, later reduced to a mile and six furlongs. It was a revolutionary kind of race, which revolutionized horse racing. I think it's very glamorous and, and of course it attracted the upper levels in society who had the wherewithal to employ painters. Stubbs is one, Herring, Pollard being two of the famous ones from the beginning of the 19th century. The story is that Herring as a young man lived adjacent to the Great North Road and saw carriages bearing the name Doncaster and was always impressed and always had this feeling that he wondered what the town was like. He decided to make a move and in 1814 landed in the town. And the story is that he was deposited next to Town Moor, saw this incredible spectacle of the 1814 St. Ledger and was inspired to paint pictures from that time. What was important about his work in Doncaster was that he painted a series of St. Ledger winners, this being the first Philo de Puta Little Feet in 1815. That series of paintings was commissioned by a Doncaster publisher called William Sheardown and prints were made that became a kind of benchmark of quality for equine art. When people look at the exhibition I suppose they're looking back in history really. They'll look at how the actual architecture of the race course has changed and obviously a lot of people won't realise how long the race has been run for it. The St. Ledger itself is the oldest classic horse race so it will give an insight looking back almost to the beginning of that actual race. This is going to be one of the stars of the exhibition. It's Charles Simpson's finish of the 1931 St. Ledger with Sandwich crossing the finishing line quite a long way ahead of the rest of the field. Um, it's one of my favourite paintings in the collection. I trained as a painter myself, as an artist, and I, I've always admired the kind of handling of the paint in this picture and the sort of, um, the, the design of the painting really, I just think so beautiful with these bands of sky and then the trees that uh, run along Borcher Road. Then we've got the free course here, which is the, where the main crowds were gathered in those days with all these little kind of blobs of paint which describe the people. Then we've got this beautiful strip of green, which is a lovely sort of abstract kind of design really, isn't it? And then these little figures, these little figures of the horses that just animate it so beautifully. And then in the foreground, of course, we've got the kind of uh, the, the main race goers, the ones that have paid for the privilege of being there. But they're all so beautifully painted with these little blobs of colour, these little squiggles. I just, every time I look at it, I just think it's astonishing. Yes, yeah, so you remember, you remember when the picture was first painted? Ben, yes, and, uh, yeah, yeah. I think it was uh, 59 or in 10. Uh, and the first image I remember of it completed was when the father had it photographed at the back of the house outside and uh, there's a big brick wall and he's just stood by the painting. And my father's Joseph Appleyard, uh, known to all his friends as Joe. He was a, an art tutor, a professional artist, but in his latter two years I would estimate he was making uh, a living commercially just out of painting uh, pictures. The bit I really love about this picture is this, this detail down the left with the figures at the bottom and then the, the list of runners and riders. One of the reasons I look forward to the picture going on exhibition is the fact that not only does it sort of uh, keep my father's name in profile but it keeps the, the jockey's name in profile because there's jockeys there I remember from a child who are still alive. 
pig at Mercer Hyde? I think artists are attracted to horsey themes because of the variety of life that it gives them in a way. You've got, you've got the, the focus of the racing, you've got the landscape that the racing takes place in, you've got the architecture of the stands, and, and you've got the crowds as well, which in a number of paintings are actually as important or more important than the actual depiction of the horses. So there's a whole range of things for the artist to go at. Because we're looking at images from over 200 years really, it tells us of the history of Doncaster and the annual St Ledger brings in thousands and thousands of people and it's a big part of the local economy so it, it reflects the role that that race and horse racing in general has had in the life of the town.